Good morning. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day. Woo! Is God good? But we do hear a kind of a tradition at Calvary. We say, He is risen, and then you say, He is risen indeed. All right, so what we're going to do now, because you guys tend to be mellow sometimes, or at least the first service. There is no first service. I'm just joking. But uh, what I want to do is I'm going to start over here, and I want to hear who can do it the loudest, okay? This group's a little, loud, a little bigger, so you guys got to really yell loud, okay? He is risen. Oh, that was good. You guys, okay, here we go. You can beat that, right? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's all do it together. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Woo, you guys are good. That's good stuff. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Amen. God is good. I knew you guys could do it. I tell you, I like that. You guys can also say amen when I say a good point that's the word of God. Amen. You're not saying amen to me. You're saying amen to the truth of God's word. The title of this morning's message is Resurrection Power That Will Change Your Life. How many want that? Amen. How many know there's a lot of people who are saved but do not walk in the power of God? Amen. They still struggle in their marriage. They still struggle with drugs. They still struggle with alcohol. They struggle with sexual immorality. They struggle and struggle. And how many know? that God has a plan for us to not have to give in to those things as Christians. Amen? Can I hear an amen out there? That is not the life we're supposed to live as a Christian. We are supposed to be filled with the power of God, the resurrection power of God. Well, today we're going to look at what are the things that help us have that power and what are the things that hinder us from having that power. So let's pray and ask God to speak to us now. Father, thank you so much that you, as Kevin said, you were crucified on Friday. You died in our place. And then you, you went and you set the captives free out of, of Abraham's bosom. And then you then rose the third day. This morning we celebrate. You rose the third day victorious over sin and death. And that as we believe, as we trust our lives to you, we have faith that is the, the same spirit that raised you from the dead can raise our physical bodies from death, amen, and from sin. And so, Father, we ask that right now your Holy Spirit would just speak to us. We pray that, that you would just bind any demonic oppression, any, any demonic spirits that would try to blind our eyes or try to hinder us from hearing what your Spirit is saying. We ask that your Holy Spirit would just be free here to speak in a powerful way, and that every heart, wherever we are, whether we're saved, whether we're not saved, whether we're walking with you, whether we're not, that every person here would be encouraged, every person would be challenged by you, and leave saying, God, you are good. So Father, we commit this time to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. You can show the picture if you want. Okay, there it is, right there. Okay. Okay. I want to ask you this. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ was crucified for you? Aren't you thankful for that? that, that and, and hear this. Sometimes we just assume we know the why. Why he was crucified. Why he had to suffer. I mean, look at that. that that's hard. Some people can't even watch the movie, The Passion of the Christ. But how many know it's good for us to look at that? Because that's what our sin required. Amen? Amen. You and I deserve, because of sin, we deserve to be separated from God, but not just separated. We deserve punishment. Amen? We deserve to spend eternity apart from God. And hear this. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I first came to Christ, I'm like, why couldn't he just forgive us? Why couldn't he just say, I forgive you guys? But the reason he couldn't do that is because we just sang, he is a loving, but he is also a just God. How many know if someone killed one of your family members and the judge that day said, hey, you know what, I feel really happy today, I feel very loving, so I'm just going to let him off. What would you say? Justice. That's wrong. You can't do that. You can't let a murderer off. That's, that's not justice. And so God in love for us, but yet being a just God, had to put all the wrath that he had towards our sin, all the judgment that he would have towards our sin, he had to put it on the back of Jesus Christ. How many know that the Bible says he who did not spare his own son but delivered him for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? How many know God has given us all things in Christ? Amen? How many are thankful for that? Amen? And look at that. Look what it took. It took a beaten body, and that is God pouring out his wrath upon Christ. Here it is. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this. 
He, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. Jesus, who knew no sin, who never sinned, he was literally all the sin you've ever committed. Think about this. Whenever you're tempted to be ashamed of your sin and feel guilt-ridden by your sin, how many know it was put on Jesus? When Jesus died on the cross, it was as if he said, I am sorry for your sin. And so how many know The Bible also says that it's by his blood that his blood cleanses us from an evil, guilty conscience. How many are thankful for that? All the evil that you and I have done, all the things we've thought, all the things we've said to people that we know are wrong, he bore that on his back. That's why he had to die on Friday. Today, if you're a Christian today, how many know you are called to to be crucified with Christ? Amen? You are not just called to be saved. You are called, when you receive Christ, to be crucified with Christ. Now, how many know that's a hard thing? Look at that. That's what crucifixion means. How many know that's salvation is the easy part of Christianity? Amen? But how many know us being crucified with Christ is a little bit of a challenge? Amen? A challenge. It's a challenge for me to be crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh with this physical body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You and I are to be crucified with Christ. And how many know, I believe when you accept Christ, it's a one, it's a first, you you do it, you make a choice to really lay your life down. But how many know, dying to self is for the rest of your life on this earth. Amen? Amen. It's, it's not a one-time thing. How many know that flesh wants to come off the cross a lot of times? It wants to come off the cross. So what does it mean? Well, it means that if you and I are truly saved, if we truly know Christ, then we, and if we've really yielded our lives to him, then we're to be a new creation. We're to be a new person. How many know we need to see that more in the church today? A new creation, not just saved. There's a lot of people who profess salvation. You know, I, I don't remember, I, I remember when I was a youth pastor about 20, 30 years ago, how many remember, does anyone remember the man formerly known as Prince? Do you remember Prince was like naked in a shower with a cross professing to be a Christian? How many know, that's a lot of Christianity today. You know what I'm saying? It, it's somebody professing Christ, but their life is not looking like Christ. Amen? Is that quietness, conviction, or is that, you know, right? Amen? And so we... We, we, we have this, these people professing Christ, but not living like Christ. But how many knows we're to be a new person, a new creation when we give our lives to Christ? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new creation. Or, uh, or you could say this, the, the old life is gone, the new life has begun. I don't know about you, but I am tired of Craig. I am tired. And some of you go, amen. We are too. Okay. But just as you're tired of Craig, sometimes I'm tired of you. Okay. So, but, but just remember this. I, I, you don't want Craig. Amen. You guys don't like Craig, the, the old Craig, and neither do I like the old you. But how many knows I'm to be, how many know you like the new Craig? Because the new Craig is like Christ. Amen. It's a new creation. It's like Christ. It's the new life or new person. If, you know, let's say this, before I was saved and before you were saved, a lot of us struggle with things, do we not? We struggle with maybe alcohol, maybe with drugs, maybe with immorality, whatever, you name it, you fill in the blank, you know what you struggle with. But how many know if you struggle with that and maybe that carries on into your Christianity, how many know that's because what's struggling with that old life is not the new person. How many know that? That is the old man struggling with that. That's our old nature struggling with pornography, with drugs, with alcohol. Can we hear amen to that? It's the old man. And so hear this. I want you to hear this. That means whenever I'm struggling with those things, it means my old sinful nature is trying to what? Come off the cross. It's trying to come off the cross. How many know we've been crucified with Christ, but how many know that just as, how many know that's one body who should never raise again? 
But it tries, does it not? It tries to pull off the cross. It tries to go, you know, it's like a zombie. It tries to come off. But how many know we need to, has anyone ever used a nail gun? Oh, they're fun, right? We should be to our flesh, amen? The flesh should be nailed on that, tied up, duct taped, never to get off the cross again. That's not the new me or the new you that struggles with alcohol or struggles with sin. It's the old me or my old sinful nature that is trying to be resurrected from being crucified with Christ. So what's the answer? You know, we, we all know this. These guys go, yeah, I know that, Craig. Tell me something I don't know. But hear this. Here it is. Galatians 5.16. Now, this was one of the first verses I ever memorized. But how many know I've been saved 34 years? This is still a verse I'm trying to live. And I think this is a verse we'll always be challenged to live with the rest of our life until we meet Christ, Christ face to face. Galatians 5.16, he says, Paul says, But I say, walk by the Spirit. Or you could say, walk by what? The new nature. Amen? Walk in the new nature. Walk in, by the Spirit. And what? You will not carry out the desire of the flesh or the old nature. How many know, you know, I always love to quote it, and you guys hate it when I sing it, but how many know Bob Dylan was right when he says, you got to serve somebody? Remember that? Do you want me to sing it? Anyone want to see it? No? No. Okay. But you got to serve somebody. You may be the devil. But anyway, sorry. <clears throat> but you can, how many knows, you can't be in the spirit and the flesh at the same time. You're either in the spirit or you're in the flesh. You're either in the new nature or the old nature. You can't be in both. Now, both can be residing and fighting in your body, but you're either walking by one spirit or you're walking by the other. Hear this. If you're not sure about that, how many know when the sons of thunder, how many know John, when he said, hey, should we call down thunder upon this city? Should we call down lightning to consume them? And what did Jesus say? You do not know what spirit you are of. Do you hear that? We can be Christian and still not be of the Holy Spirit or of the what? New nature. My prayer is for us, this is my prayer, that we would walk in that new nature. How many, how many like to do that this year? Amen. Walk in a new nature. Be a different. Have that resurrection power living through us. But the way to do it is to walk by the Spirit. I tell you this, I, try, I did this this morning. I try to do it every day. Before my little feet, well, they're not so little, but my 14 size feet, feet hit the floor, I pray, Lord, fill me with your spirit and empower me to walk by your spirit. Empower me to live by you because, Lord, I know without you, without you, what does he say? We can do nothing. The only way I can live this life victoriously, the only way I can be a Christian and not just say I'm a Christian is by what? Walking by the spirit. Amen. John 12, 24 says this. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil, hear this, here's part of crucifixion, and dies, unless it's planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. Or you could say it just remains not very powerful. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest, hear this, of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. That means if you hear this, what he's saying there, because some people say, well, I can't love life. No, he's saying if you love your old life, you love to cling to your old life. He says you're going to lose it. But those who care nothing for their life, meaning their old way of life, the old ways in this world will keep their life for eternity. That should wake some of us up today, Amen. You love that old life of you mix. I, I just found myself the other day talking about the old life. And the Lord's like, why are you talking about the old life? And sometimes it's good to share your testimony. But how many know sometimes our testimony is sort of glorifying the old life? And sometimes we talk about the old life like it wasn't that bad. But how many know that old life was going to send you to hell? So it's bad. Amen? And the Lord always reminds you, if it was so good, Craig, why did you want to kill yourself? I guess it wasn't as good as, I, as the devil tries to tell me it was. Unless we're willing as Christians, not just once, but if we're not willing as Christians to be crucified with Christ, unless we're willing to stop living for ourselves, stop resurrecting the old man, and allow our old sinful nature to completely die, then hear this, we will never really live for him. 
or truly experience his full abundant life and his power that he has for us. You know, I'll tell you this, and I can only share with me, with you what I saw, but I'll tell you this. When I came to know Christ 34 years ago, I was instantly delivered from drugs. Instantly. Instantly delivered from alcohol. And people say to me, well, that's great for you, Craig. That's neat. You're so special. No. God says he's no respecter of persons. That's not true. How many know that's not true? But you know what the difference was with me and some of you? Here's the difference. I was truly to the end of myself. I truly had a gun the day before I accepted Christ. And I said, God, I hate my life. I want to, well, I didn't say God. I just said, I hate my life. I want to kill my life, take my life. And what God basically said to me, he said, Craig, hear this. Here's the suicide I love. Kill your flesh. Kill your old way of life. Let go of that old life and live completely for me. And you know what I did? I was dumber than a box. I did so much drugs. I was just like, <laughs> I mean, I was not a smart guy. But you know what I said? I said, here's what my prayer, here's my deep intellectual prayer to Jesus. I said, God, I hate my life. But if you can do something with my life, it's completely yours. And how many know God just went, Pew. How many of some of us, even if we've been saved for 10, 20 years, need to maybe say that today? I've been trying to do this life in my own strength. I've been sort of religious. How many know Jesus did not like religious people? Who'd he fight? The Pharisees. But if you will say today with me, I want, how many, how many know this? Hear this, guys. I want to get back to that old man. I don't want to, I, no, wait, that, no, stop, stop. Old man, wrong words. I want to get back to that brand new conversion. That heart that doesn't hold on to this life. This heart, the heart that says, my life is yours, God. Amen. And sometimes I think in Christ, I've learned, in not Christ, but in the church, in the kind of the carnal church, I've learned to sort of grab hold of my life again. And how many know I need to, what? If you try to gain your life, you'll what? Lose it. But he who loses life, he who dies to the old man and lives to walk in the new man, how many know that's the person who lives? You guys love me out there? Yeah. It's going to get good. It's going to get better. Well, it's all good. It's God's word. But it's going to, there's going to, be, it's going to be happy, I promise. I'm unhappy. I want to just ask this. How many of you really want to experience the resurrection power of Jesus in your life? Yeah, all of us. But hear this. I'm going to say this to the end. But hear this. You can't have resurrection without crucifixion. You can't have resurrection life without death. Amen. All of us want resurrection power, but very few of us are willing to die. And guess what? You know why God's moving in all these other countries in the world? Because these people, a lot of them are under Muslim reign, under a lot of oppression, communism. And how many know when they come to know Christ, they're willing. They've already been under a dictator. They're ready to come and submit to a loving master, a loving God. How I many know in some ways our freedom has almost made us, you know, we're so free that we're free to where we think no one has to be Lord of our life. And how I many know God does not like the song, I Did It My Way by Frank Sinatra. That is not some song that should be played at your funeral, which is played at all my Italian family's funeral. And I mean, I'm going, mm, you know. Can you imagine the Lord run the tape? Let's see if there was a problem here. You know, I mean, could you imagine? It would not be, it's not the testimony of our lives, hopefully, as I did it my way. Just as Christ was willfully submitted to the Father's will, and hear this, which was death and crucifixion for who? You and I. Now think about this. It says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means when we were ungrateful, we were basically unthankful, ungrateful, could care less about Jesus, he was thinking about you and I when he died on the cross. Now think about it. If you and I died on the cross for me, I want to say, hey, now, you know, Canon, you know I'm dying for you, right? So you are thankful, right? You are appreciative. Can you imagine if King goes, I don't care. Do whatever you want. You're stupid. I would not want to die for him or you. But how many know Jesus loved us so much that he saw past what we were saying at that moment and saw us what we would be today? Amen. But he died. On the cross for you and I, so that why? You and I might live, so that you and I could have a new nature. His Holy Spirit could live in us. 
Now, Jesus, not wanting to be separated from the Father, hear this. I don't believe it was the cross that Jesus was fighting. I don't believe it was the pain. I believe Jesus was a very strong man. You know, you know he was a carpenter. We always think he was a wood carver. But hear this. Carpenter also meant he was a stone worker. He cut stones. He made, they made troughs. You know, probably where he was laid in was not wood. It was probably carved out of rock. How many know, if you, I used to be, uh, work for a hod carrier as a mason. If you've ever done, worked with masons or did bricks, I, I was trying the other day. We used to take, this is just to show you strength. I can't even do one now. But I used to take two cinder blocks. You know what a cinder block this big? We used to have to pinch two in each hand and stack them on scaffoldings. You do that for very long, you will be pretty strong. I can barely lift one now. I'm like, you know. But that was Jesus. So I don't think it was the, the cross that he was so afraid of or, or so concerned about, but it was the separation from the Father. He had never been separated from the Father. Never. And then hear this. He then had never had sin poured out upon him. Swindoll, a lot smarter man than me, Chuck Swindoll, he said it was as if Jesus was baptized in our sin. It was as if there was a sin that had lust and greed and child molesting and every sick sin you could imagine, and Jesus had to be dipped in that tub. Could you imagine? And Jesus is saying, oh, no, Father, no, please, no. If there's any other way, here's what Jesus said, and hear this, Luke twenty two forty two. And remember, our goal is to be like Christ, right? To be like Jesus. So we should listen to how Jesus prays. Here's what he says. Father, talking about the cross, if it is your will, take this cup or take this cross away from me. Meaning if there's any other way to redeem mankind. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. How many know that's a good prayer for us? We should make, it's, the Bible says, let your request be made known to God. And you can make requests, but how many know that's the key word, request, not demand? Unless it's definitely in Scripture, you should make a request, but then let the Father say, nice idea, but no. And we don't hear the no from the Father, but we know that Jesus went to the cross, so the, God, the Father's answer was no. And that's why the scripture says in Romans 8, 32, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? How many of you know that Jesus, if Jesus prayed this prayer, that we should pray this prayer much, much more to the Father? Now some of you might be still saying, and hopefully not, but some of you might be saying, well, Pastor Craig, I'm still not convinced or I'm still not sure that I want to be crucified with Christ. I'm not sure if I want to be totally surrendered to the Father's will because, you know what, I kind of like my will a little bit. And especially I don't want to surrender if it means dying or being crucified. Well, hopefully this scripture will change your mind. It's found in Philippians 2.5. It says this, talking about Jesus and talking to us about how Christ was but how we should be. Let this mind or attitude be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, Though he was God, he did not think equality with God as something to cling to. Remember the kenosis we studied in Philippians? He, he, even though he was God, he emptied himself of his Godhood. He, He didn't sin, but he basically turned down the dimmer switch. He basically... Turned down the power. That's why the transfiguration, remember he shone like as bright as the sun, but he kind of toned it down. It's like he dimmed the switch. He didn't, he, he, he let go of all his own power and only trusted the Father to give him power. And it says, verse 7, instead he gave up his divine privileges. That's what I was saying. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, verse 8, he humbled himself. Here's the resurrection. Here's the crucifixion. Here's the death of self. Here's what we need to learn. Verse 8, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died. Remember, his will was that he didn't have to go to the cross, but he did obey. He died a criminal's death for us on the cross. Verse 9, therefore, what happens when you obey God? What happens, here it is, verse 9. This is why, if you're not sure you should, here's why. Verse 9. Therefore God elevated or exalted him to the the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. How many like that? 
You exalt yourself, you do your own will, God says what? He'll put you low. You exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. But he says what? You humble yourself to his will, then what will happen? You'll be what? Exalted. We need to surrender like Jesus to God. If we truly want to know God's abundant life, if we truly want to see the power of God that we hear happening in Africa and happening in Iran and happening in all these places or China, then we truly need to be willing to die. Die to self. Die to self proof Die to the old nature just as Jesus did. Here's what he says in Luke 17, 33. Jesus talking again. He says, If you cling to your life, or you could say your old nature, you will lose it. But if you let your life go, the old life. If you'll let it go, you could save it. You'll save it. It's basically, you could say it this way. If you give your life completely to Jesus, you will save your life. How many know you can't serve two masters? You'll love one and hate the other. How many know it's time for the Church of America to start hating the old man or the old nature? It's time to say no more. You will be crucified. You'll stay crucified. And I don't want to live or walk by you anymore. But how many know it's a choice? It's not a one-time thing. It's a daily thing of saying no. How many know every time? How many know you can leave this place today and drive right out of this parking lot and someone can cut you off? And guess what? You'll be tempted. That that flesh will want to tear off the cross. I just had that happen the other day. I'm taking my wife to, to hear the oncology report for her cancer. And, and I went to hear it. And this girl pulled out in front of me, honked at me, and gave me some love signs. And, and uh, wow, how I many know that wasn't a good day to do that to me? I wanted to lay hands on her. <laughs> Better watch that. No, I was just not happy. And I want to tell her how unhappy. And my wife, I'm doing this. I'm from New York. You know, I guess they say in driver's cut, you're never supposed to use the horn. The horn is just decoration now, I guess. But I mean, in New York, that's appendage. I mean, you know, right? So then she honked at me. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, and my wife's like, oh, Jesus, save him, Lord. Please, the pastor, save him. You know. <laughs> I know none of you do that. But you got a pastor who needs the flesh crucified. Amen. If you truly want real purpose for your life and have a life where God's power is truly flowing through you, how many know this? (laughs) I'm tired of laying hands on the sick and seeing no one recover. Amen? And I know that because my wife has cancer. The Bible says these signs in Mark 16, these signs shall follow those who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, we as good Baptists, I was a Baptist, so I can say good Baptist, we have said, well, God doesn't do that today. How many know the Bible says in Hebrews 13 that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? You know why God doesn't do it today? Because we aren't crucified to the flesh like those people were in Rome or in Israel. How many know those people are radical for Jesus? How many know I believe God wants to do that again? In America. Because you know how I know this? Because the Bible says in in Romans 5.20, wherever sin abounds, how many know sin, have you noticed any sin abounding? A major church in our town, a major church, major church, one of the biggest churches in our town has just professed, they're, they're embracing don't ask, don't tell with homosexuality. And now guess what's happening? If whenever you hear a church do that, guess where it's going? Towards saying homosexuality is fine. Now hear me, so those of you who are going to go back. Uh, what do you say? He says about homosexuality. God loves homosexuals. But you cannot be a homosexual Christian. Amen? Amen? You can be someone who struggled with homosexuality and God delivered you. But how many know the Bible says homosexuals, adulterers, fornicators, drunkards, swindlers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Such were some of you, past tense. How many know we need the were back again in our churches? But now churches say, hey, if you can't beat them, join them. And guess what? This big church now, I've heard it from a lot of people. We try to confirm it. They didn't answer us. But how many know this big church now is doing homosexual marriage off-site? And you wonder why the power of God does not flow in our midst. 
when homosexuality is something we're debating today. When Jesus being the only way is something we're debating a lot today in the church. How many know it's time for us to get back to the basics of Christianity? It's time to say what God says is true and let God be true and every liberal theologian be a liar. That's the Craig version. You know? It's time to say enough because I want to see and I hope you are sick and tired of being sick and tired and want to see the power of God flow. But God will not, and I promise you this, he will not flow through a life that's a little bit of God and a little bit of flesh. He wants a life that's radical for him. You know what, I'll tell you this, and I want to say this isn't in my notes, it's free, and I know when I say free, you guys get scared, it's dangerous, but hear this. My wife's cancer, I am very sad about it, I don't like it at all, how many can say amen to that? But it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me, because it's made me feel so powerless, so fleshly. It's made me say, I need God more than I've ever needed God before. Amen. So that's a good thing, amen? amen? And I'm sad it's had to be with my wife, but it's woken me up to say enough, enough. It's time to die. It's time to have all hands and legs nailed to the cross and no more old Craig. If we want this power, then we need to be willing to die to self Kill the old man. Now here's, here's the good part. Here's the great promise from Jesus. If we're truly willing to die and submitted to God's will, which is first crucifixion of our old life, our old self, our old self-rule, if we're willing to do this, then the same power, that same power of the Holy Spirit, the same resurrection power that raised Jesus that we celebrate, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead will live in you and me. Amen? Yeah, give the Lord a clap. But as I said, or as the Word says, you cannot have resurrection power without crucified life. You can't have it. If Jesus sort of died, could you imagine if Jesus had one foot in the tomb and one foot out? You wouldn't really call that a resurrection, would you? But he was completely, I've gone to what they believe is the tomb, and it's pretty amazing to believe Jesus really laid there dead, and God raised him the third day. That's pretty amazing. If we do this, as I said, the same power, here it is, Romans 8, 11 says this, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So when we accept Christ, it lives in us. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, hear this, if we'll die, he'll give life to your mortal bodies. By the same Spirit living within you. But you and I will never know that power until we're thoroughly convinced that our old self has nothing that we want. And let's be real. Can we, can we be real here? Can we be real? Can I be real? Yeah. Part of me likes. Wah, wah. Now, I know you don't like it if it's you, but sometimes we like to have that power, don't we? Sorry, God, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. Wah. But how many know we've got to be convinced that that shouldn't be a Christian? How many know you guys, if you saw me do that, you'd go, Pastor Craig, oh my goodness. Wouldn't you? And isn't it funny, you'll say to me, oh, pastors aren't perfect, they're, they're human too. But isn't it amazing how much you judge me for being human? And then if you do the same thing, it's like, oh, but you know, I need grace. I am not a pastor. Like there's two heavens. Like there's a pastor heaven and then there's the common sinner heaven. The same standard you judge others, you yourself will be what? Yeah. Judged. Ah, there you go. So if you want me to go, then don't yourself. <laughs> the Father's ultimate will for your life, hear this. This is it. I'm going to wrap it up here. This is it. Am I good? No. This is it. This is, write this down. Big bold. The Father's ultimate will for your life is to see his son, Jesus, formed in you. That's his goal. Not just to see, you see, we think, I'm saved. Ooh. 
No, that's the start of the race. That's not even, you're not even, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know if you see Tim Hawkins. Anyone see Tim Hawkins when he talks about marriage? You know, we go, how long have you been married? Three months? <laughs> and Mary goes, you're just like, oh, this ain't that bad. This ain't that, this is easy, this is easy. It's like going up a roller coaster. Oh, this is nothing. When, woo, you know, how many know? When you get saved, you've been saved a couple months, that's easy, right? You're all excited. But how many know? Six months, then all of a sudden, dying to self, saying no to the flesh. Caring about others more than you care for yourself. That's an easy one, isn't it? And you realize, wow, this life is a little, I need God to live this life. And if you don't, then you're probably (laughs) self-righteous. You know, but we need God to do this. And here it is. Galatians 4.19 says this. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again, until Christ is formed in you. Did you hear that? Formed in you. The Greek word formed here is the word morpho. Morpho. Where we get the English word what? Metamorphosis. What's a metamorphosis? Show a little picture. Where's the metamorphosis? There we go. How many know that was you before Jesus? (laughs) Just, you know, thinking you were cool, but you're just a slimy green caterpillar. That's us. That's before Jesus. But then what happens? Then what has, then what, what is Jesus when we accept Christ? What does he want to make us into? Ah, now that, isn't that a lot better? Put it back. Yeah, which one do you like better? Now girls will say, just to be trouble, it's cute. A little cowbird, it's precious. No, you have one of those crawling in the middle of the night, Whoa! you know, you'd be freaking out. But you have a butterfly flying, oh, that's cute, isn't that precious? So there it is. That's what we want to do. But hear this. What has to first happen for the caterpillar to become a beautiful butterfly? What has to happen? Isn't that amazing? The Lord just showed me this. I didn't even steal this from anybody. That's a joke. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? The cocoon hangs on a tree or a bush, but it hangs. And how many know that that doesn't look like much of anything, does it? It looks pretty ugly. It looks like a big fur ball. But look at that. That's what has to happen from the green, slimy, old life that we had to now to death, crucifixion, the cross, the tree, called a cross tree. And now what? What happens? Become the butterfly. You can show the butterfly again. But hear this. Show my little Heimlich. <laughs> Does anyone remember Bug's life? I didn't know about this. I was, must have been sleeping. You know, how, many, how many of you sleep during your kids' movies? But I get some good sleep. But, but her, Heimlich, Heimlich? Yeah, it's Heimlich, I think. Is it Heimlich? I don't know. Some German Heimlich. 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 <laughs> but look at Heimlich. Do you notice something with Heimlich? I wish I had laser burn. He has little butterfly wings. Heimlich went in the cocoon, popped out, and he's like, Funk, and he falls down, and he has these teeny little butterfly wings and a huge caterpillar body. How many know that's a lot of us in Christ? And then he goes, what does he say? He gets the, the bees pick him up, and they go, he goes, oh my goodness, I'm a beautiful butterfly. You all look like ants to me. They're ants, you know? <laughs> How many know that's the church of Jesus Christ, a lot of us? You know, <laughs> kind of bouncing on the ground. But how many know the goal is to be the beautiful butterfly? Jesus will not rest until you and I are the beautiful butterfly, until Christ is formed in you. And if you're tired, if you can relate like me to being the big Heimlich, a big, fat, slimy caterpillar with wings, little Jesus wings, and you say, you know what, it's time for me to become a butterfly, I want to encourage you today. Again, we'll never know the resurrection power of Jesus until we fully submit our lives to Christ. You can't have resurrection without crucifixion. You can't have resurrection power without death. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? If you're here today and with every head bowed and every eye closed out of respect for the Lord, If you're here today and you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you to give your life to Christ, maybe you've never given your life to Christ. Maybe you're you're here and you're not sure if you were to die that you would spend 
eternity with God. How many know today God is saying, come to me? He says it's his will that none may perish, but all might come to know him. He says to all who receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. So if that is you, if you're feeling that call, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to give you an opportunity in a moment to receive Christ. But I also believe there's another group. There's, there's the Heimlich group. You're saved, but if you're honest, you've been the flying caterpillar. You've been a big caterpillar with teeny little wings, and now today it's time to give your life completely to Jesus and say, Jesus, I want my old nature, my old woman, my old man to die, and I want you to really live so I can become once and for all a beautiful butterfly where I can allow your power to flow through me. If that is you today and you want to pray that prayer to recommit your life or to say, God, I'm tired of playing games. I really want to be crucified with Christ so it's no longer I who live, but you live in me and through me. If that is you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I want this. Will every one of you pray, even if you're doing great with the Lord, just pray this prayer with me. How many of you can't pray to receive the Lord too much? The Bible says this. I'm not saying you're getting saved again, but how many know the Bible says if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that God, we confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. So would you all pray this prayer with me, even if you're doing great? And if you're doing great, pray for those that need to receive Christ. Pray in your heart with me right now. Just pray. But everyone, pray this prayer out loud so no one feels like they're the only one praying it. Just pray it with me right now. Lord Jesus, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I give you my life for the first time or I recommit my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to live for you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for receiving me back. And help me to be that butterfly that flies for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Would you keep your heads and your heads bowed and your eyes closed? The Bible says, Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. But he says, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven when he comes in glory with his heavenly angels. I'm not going to ask you, to said, to come forward, but if you prayed that prayer to receive Christ, or you prayed that prayer to recommit your life and you meant it, would you just right now just raise your hand high as the Lord say, God, I meant that prayer. Just raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you right there. God bless you. Amen, right there. God bless you. A lot of hands. God bless you in the back. God bless you. Anyone else, just raise your hand up to the Lord saying, Lord, I'm not ashamed. I prayed the prayer to recommit. Or I prayed the prayer to give my life to you for the first time. God bless you right there. Those two hands right there. God bless you. I want to pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these hands. And Lord, it's nothing about the hand. It's nothing about even praying the prayer so much as it's meaning it in your heart to say, God, I really surrender. And let every heart that has prayed that prayer to give their hearts to you for the first time or to recommit, Lord, bless them. Help them. Remind them of this commitment. Remind them that they made a commitment to you to, to give their life to you, to die to their old nature, their old self, and to live in Christ. Fill them, Lord. Draw them. May they wake up tomorrow not forgetting this, but may they wake up with just an invigoration that just says, I want to die to self. I want to live for Christ. I don't want to be the old person. I don't want to be the caterpillar. I want to be the butterfly in Jesus. So bless them. Seal this work that you have done, Lord Jesus, and bind every demonic spirit, any parent that might be against this, anything that would try to steal this seed, protect them. Protect these seeds that they will be a bare fruit and their fruit would remain. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Amen. For those. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let's play that last song we played right before we end. You may stand.